Some arts of magic should just be forbidden and should be never taught to anyone. Some types of combat transcend any moral code in existence, but for those that only care about having an upper hand in combat to quickly disintegrate what they're facing, they will go to any extent to get that upper hand. They don't care, what is that shouldn't be left alone to rest in peace, no, they even make use of their spirits to torment them for eternity. These types of mages are shunned by everyone for their lack of moral code. But they are specialized in very potent magic arts and possess rare weapons that are so diverse and lethal, they destroy everyone instantly. So what are you truly going to do about it? What do you call a mage that has high intelligence but is also heavily involved with the gods, for the better or worse? Int and Fade is sometimes also called the Forbidden Duo. <coughs> okay, not really, I made it up. But it sounds cool, so we'll run with it. The reality is that making a hybrid build based on these two stats can be a bit complicated, to say the least. But in this video, and in the late game version of this video, you will see the true power that lays behind the Forbidden Duo. Now, let's cut straight to the case. There's only one weapon in the game that comes with scaling in both Fate and Intelligence. This is the Sword of Night and Flame. If you remember when Elden Ring launched, the Sword of Night and Flame was one of the strongest weapons in the game. But then the 17th of March 2022 came and it bitch slapped any Sword of Night and Flame enthusiasts right into the face. It was a very dark day for our sad little sword. It was completely nerfed. The sword barely lasted for 3 weeks enjoying its popularity. Afterwards it went missing from the world and the few people that still wielded this sword after that dark day. Well, let's just say they quit the game and are now playing Minecraft. But now it's about 7 months later and recently a patch went live, changing Sword of Night and Flame yet again for the third time, giving it multiple buffs and it is now back with a vengeance because this sword is incredibly powerful again. Add to that that a lot of sorceries and incantations that scale with Int and Fate got a buff as well, making an Int Fate build now more interesting than it has ever been. You know what's good as well? Warplant Online. Thanks to Warplant Online for sponsoring today's video. Warplant Online is a massive multiplayer online real-time strategy game where you engage in global warfare based on the real world and it's available on various platforms. Whether you're playing against the AI or other players you actually have to use your brain to win. So it's actually just like Elden Ring in that sense because there's always a nice sense of challenge and in this case you have to adapt your tactics, army and commanders to get the best results. You build your own custom base to defend yourself against the enemy while stockpiling on troops, tanks, helicopters to make yourself as mighty as possible. You can play with players from all around the world but whether you want to form alliances with them or make them your next targets that is up to you. Also, you know Rambo, right? The badass movie. Everybody wants to play as Rambo, you, you can't deny it. Well, right now Warplant Online are celebrating the 40th anniversary of Rambo First Blood. John Rambo is in Warplant Online on a special mission to guide the players through the secrets of warfare, lead the way through the First Blood chain event operation and help the players become a one-man army. The first 40 players who download the game now and reach level 10 in the game till November 10th will win a $100 Amazon e-gift card. The winners will be announced on November 25th and contacted in the game itself. Itself. All of that sounds like it's a great moment to try out the game, right? Just click my link in the description or scan the QR code and you will also get 4000 army units T1 and 4000 medals to get OP early in that game basically. Make sure to check it out. Let's continue with the video. Now there's no class that starts with both high levels in fate as well as in intelligence. So instead we have to determine what the most efficient option will be when adding up various stats. Doing so will make it apparent that the best class for an Int and Fate build will in fact be the Astrologer, due to its high stats in Intelligence, Mind and Dexterity, all important stats for an Int and Fate build. So get the Astrologer and start off with the Golden Seed as your keepsake to get that extra flask at the start, it is really the best option for any new playthrough. Now the nice thing about the Sword of Night and Flame is that you can get it right at the start of the game and I'll show you how to do that very quickly and efficiently. But first, we need to do the get OP early basics. And if you watch my previous videos and are familiar with this step, then skip ahead to the timestamp shown on the screen. If not, 
buckle up and let's get going first of all go to the gate front side of grace get your mount from melina then go back to the starting area right where you just met your bff and mount and ride to the beach in the southern part of this place it is really close to the starting area on the beach you will find a golden pickled fowl food which you will want to use in a second then get the morning star weapon in the northern part of the weeping peninsula so near limgrave in the chest and it's now time to go to Galit. go to the third church of America, pick up the goodies that are laying around here for you to pick up and then go beyond the church and take the teleport. This will teleport you to exactly here on the map and you want to go south till you reach Fort Ferret. That's this spot on the map. Ignore all the enemies on the route to the fort no matter how big they are. And when you arrive at Fort Ferret, you want to pick up a very nice talisman. You want to ignore all the bats while you're running inside and move towards the ladder. Just run, climb up and then pick up the Dactus Medallion. This is very important, so don't forget to do that. Then keep moving till you get to the second gap and jump down. Move to the right of yours, pick up the golden rune that's laying around there and then jump to the sneaky pathway to your right. Keep moving till you can jump down again and there will be the Radican Sword Shield. If you're not familiar with this talisman, it's a very good talisman that will help us out because it provides a lot of relevant stats right at the start of the game. Then go outside, kill Griel, the big ass dragon, with your Morningstar weapon equipped so you proc bleed and kill him quickly. When the dragon is almost dead, make sure to pop the golden pickled fowl food that we just picked up so we get a bunch of extra runes. Now you'll have a bunch of runes and it's just really a nice way to get a good start as it's pretty much free. Now that we've done the standard get OP early stuff, we can start with the actual build. Make sure to also use the golden rune that you picked up inside the fort as well. Then go level up. The Sword of Night and Flame, relatively speaking, has quite some requirements in terms of stats for you to be able to wield it. It is beefy, but thankfully with us now having a bunch of runes just from this one kill, we can make sure we get all the stats we need and equip this sword right at the start of the game. In this case, make sure to get 24 Fate and 24 Intelligence and I would just put the rest in Vigor so you don't get one tapped by bosses or mobs and actually have some sustain. Now the Radican Sword Shield is really nice for the Death Mage just for the reason that it makes sure we fulfill the strength requirement of the sword of night and flame without us ever having to spend a single point in strength and it gives us a bunch of sustain with the points in vigor and endurance as well which makes the early game just a lot smoother now it's time to pick up the trophy of the build our sword leave Kaelid, go back to limgrave and make sure to get into lernia for this you can bypass stormbill like this then in Lernia, you want to move like this and get to Caria Manor. When you arrive at Caria Manor, you can immediately pick up a nice sorcery that also got a really significant buff recently. And it makes using this sorcery a lot smoother now. Basically, just move like this till you get to the Scarab, kill the Scarab and you will get the Carrion Piercer sorcery. I was already recommending this sorcery before the recent buff, so for sure pick it up when you're here. It is really good. Now going back to the entrance, you want to progress till you get to the Manor lower level side of Grace basically. From this side of Grace onwards it is pretty easy you just want to move like shown in the footage until you basically can jump onto a roof to your left here you'll see a hole in the distance where you can climb down do so and when you're down you will see a chest in that chest is the sword of night and flame yes finally we have it before we go over the sword however we need to upgrade it upgrading this sword in particular is really easy and fast actually mostly because of its really convenient location eg is a smith that sits near Caria manor right here you can go to him and he'll be right next to the side of grace in fact as well and you can buy somber smithing stone one two four right away eg also upgrades the sword for you at the same moment so it is a two in one surface and yeah really convenient now we'll have a plus four sword of night and flame but we want to go the full route and upgrade it all the way to plus six so for this go back to limgrave go to the dragon burn rooms in limgrave and take the teleporter chest you will teleport to celia crystal tunnel and you can run out of this place then mount up and stick to the right side till there is a passage to your right when you see the opening of the passage, go inside of it and go all the way till the end and you will see a somber smithing stone number 5 for you to pick up. Now we're almost done but you want to go back to the seal crystal tunnel again where you just teleported to. You want to progress through this place basically till you get to the falling star beast boss. And usually when you're like playing a melee build, this guy is a huge pain in the ass. But haha, <laughs> with Sword of Night and Flame, it is the easiest fight of your life. Just to him quickly, no time to waste, he will drop that shiny stone for you and go ahead and upgrade your sword to plus 6 now. Now you'll have a plus 6 Sword of Night and Flame right at the start of the game.
Now before we get into the combat we need to do a few more things. First we need to get our staff for casting sorceries. Yet again we have to go back to the Celia Crystal Tunnel. I hope you do like this place because as you will see you will be going here a lot. Go outside and mount up. Move something like this to get to a staircase right there. And it will lead you to the Great Roxing spell. Definitely pick that thing up because it is one of the best spells that you can pick up at the start of the game. It deals great damage and it also deals great poise damage. Meaning you will have a nice tool to stance break your opponents relatively easily. Near the spot you will also find the Meteorite Staff laying around here. Exactly here. Pick it up because that is without a doubt the best staff that you can pick up at the start of the game. The reason of this is that the Meteorite Staff has a very high scaling, a S tier scaling right from the get go. You don't have to go through any effort to upgrade it as you can't even upgrade it in the first place. But right from the start you'll have a staff with amazing scaling. So your sorceries will deal a lot more damage. It also boosts gravity sorceries and thankfully we just picked up a gravity sorcery that is probably also the best gravity sorcery in the game. Now the Prince of Death Staff is the staff that actually fits this build thematically and functionally. But it's the staff we'll be using in the follow-up video. For two reasons basically. The staff is in the deep root depths, so it's basically impossible to get it at the start of the game. And even if you get it with relatively low stats for Int and Fate, it doesn't shine enough and the Meteorite staff will easily beat it. So definitely just use the Meteorite staff early to mid game and you'll be good to go. Regarding gear, there's really only one set that fits the team. There's no contest. We need to get the Royal Remain set. For this you want to go back to Lurnia, pretty much all the way in the south, and keep moving towards the village of the Albanarx. When you get into this village keep moving up the hill basically till you can slap the shit out of the guy disguised as a pot after doing some of that he will show his true face and give you the right side of the helic tree secret medallion which is like a nice thing for way later on in the late game but most importantly it functions as a trigger because if you now go back to the round table hold the edge lord that is usually quiet and doesn't want to talk to you will now start attacking you. And with our legendary Sword of Night and Flame, this fight is a complete joke and you just obliterate him. You will get his entire set afterwards when you go to his usual standing spot. This set fits thematically perfectly, but more importantly, it has a bunch of defensive stats for us, so we can sustain hits even better now. It also has this unique property that if you're really low HP, it will heal you in fact, till you get around 18% of HP, which is nice if you have like poison on your ticking. It literally prevents you from dying from annoying damage over time effects, and in a general sense, it also just gives you this nice heal for free, so extra sustain. Get this gear set for sure, and if you want to be truly cool, in line with your new drip, then make sure to give the video a like and subscribe if you're still not subscribed. You know you want to do it. For our Flask of Wonders physic, we definitely need to pick up the Intelligence Not Crystal tier. It is useful for making it possible to cast some of the sorceries we want to cast later on in this video, right at the start of the game. But more generally speaking, it also just gives us extra stats and does extra damage. You can pick up this Crystal tier right next to Carrier Manor, where we just picked up our sword. For the second Crystal tier, you'll want to pick up the Magic Shrouding Crack tier. You can pick this up in the north of Lurnia as well, but it's in the eastern part of northern Lurnia. Go there and kill the Earth Tree Avatar. This guy hits really hard, but he's a pussy because he's afraid of fire. So make sure to use the fire aspect of Night and Flame Stance, and there you go. You will completely obliterate this tree, or whatever it is, in a few hits. Now, with everything set, we can start using the Sword of Night and Flame and completely destroy everything in our path. Now, when you start using the Sword of Night and Flame, you'll exactly know what I was talking about at the start of the video. It is extremely powerful again. With the Sword of Night and Flame's Night Stance, so when you use a normal attack after using the Ash of War, you'll get the Magic Beam. And you can already easily destroy everything with this massive beam of pure death. It will deal insane damage with our current setup. The beam also got buffs in its possibilities for its trajectory, so it is much easier to hit things with it now when they are not on the same horizontal level as you. Then with the Sword of Night and Flames Flame Stance, so pressing R2, which is usually a heavy attack, after using the Ash of War, you get this insane burst of flames. I would recommend you to use this aspect of the sword against groups of mobs and use it as your AoE ability basically, because it will scorch them to death pretty much instantly and deal a bunch of damage to a bunch of targets. I would also definitely use it against things that have either high resistances against magic damage or are extra vulnerable against fire. 
the flame stance will completely destroy whatever you're fighting in that case, exactly like you just saw with the Earth 3 avatar. And for all other situations, especially single target versus bosses, I would use the night stance and make quick work of whatever you're fighting like that. Now as you can see, the duality of the Sword of Night and Flame is really nice, it covers you for pretty much any situation in the game, and just with this sword alone you can just beat everything already. And you might think, this is a mage build, the blade will deal no damage when you actually use it as a sword. No, don't get it twisted, when you actually hit things with the blade of the sword, you one shot a lot of mobs as well. So you can do that as a nice trick to conserve FP, and you'll deal a bunch of damage as well. Easy. Now, we're not done yet, we are a death mage, and we have the armor, we have the looks, we have the mentality, and a really scary sword. But we have zero death sorceries now. So, what are we going to do about that? There are 5 death sorceries in the game, and you can get both the ranker call as well as the ancient death ranker at the start of the game. I would honestly just skip on ranker call, it is in every shape and form just a weaker ancient death ranker. It is less efficient when speaking in terms of mana cost, especially after the recent patch, it deals less damage and it sends out fewer spirits. Ancient Death Rancor, however, is going to be our main death sorcery that we're going to use. It is actually a really good sorcery and also really underrated in my opinion. Recently it got buffed as well, making it now even better than it already was and I will show you why in a second. But first we need to get it, so go back to Lernia again, go to the gate down north side of Grace, then move a bit south and you'll hear that the music will change. What could that possibly mean? I don't know. Well, maybe a giant bird trying to murder you. Exactly that. Kill this bird, it is supposed to be a higher level bird. But honestly, whether you want to nuke it right away or otherwise go for the safer option and spam rock sling from a distance, as you will in fact outrange this guy, you will ultimately kill him and get ancient that rancor. Ancient Death Ranker is really nice in combination with Sword of Night and Flame because as you see you will send up to 9 spirits to attack your enemies and every spirit individually staggers your enemy. So 9 in a row means a lot of time where the enemy is getting gang banged by these spirits and they will be just standing there doing jack shit, they can't do anything about these annoying spirits and you get all the opportunity in those moments to completely destroy your enemy without them ever even touching you in any capacity. So you don't want to use this spell for its damage output, at least not yet in this phase of the game, but for the insane pressure that this sorcery applies on your enemies and all this control you get with it. Literally you can destroy late game enemies such as Electo even though we are still just level 36. Just with this combo of using Ancient Death Rancor and Sword of Night Flames Night Stance, it is a very simple combo but extremely effective and lethal and you have all the control you need over any situation with this combo. In terms of design, Ancient Death Rancor is also just top tier, look at those skulls, get that thing. Now in regards to other sorceries. Unfortunately the thing with in fate sorceries and incantations is that a lot of them are locked behind progression, the capital or they just don't really shine in the early and mid game yet. So they will be rather a part of the mid to late game version of this build. And trust me there's a lot more you can do with these sorceries and incantations than you might think. So don't miss the follow up video. But with Ancient Death Rancor we have a very solid sorcery that fits the theme as one of our main sorceries. You also want to complement the sorcery however and pick up some other sorceries, not Int and Fate sorceries specifically, but just generally good sorceries that you can actually pick up at the start of the game. So these are 5 sorceries that you can pick up early game that I truly do recommend as they are just very good and complement the build in various ways and gives you a tool for any situation really. Rock Sling, as mentioned before, it is the best sorcery in the game that you can actually pick up at the start of the game. Carrion Piercer, as mentioned before as well. Then you want to pick up Carrion Greatsword, Carrion Slicer and Glint Blade Phalanx. These three sorceries are really good and are really easy to get, especially when you're just starting out. And some of them actually also got a buff recently, making them very nice options. Since you have the Fate requirement pretty much, you can also get a seal and get both Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength to boost your damage output even more. I personally didn't use them in this video because because as you saw, the damage output is already insane, so it is kinda pointless, but yeah, you could consider getting them as well to get even more OP. Now after getting Margot, as you saw earlier in this video, you can get another talisman. And for this slot, I do truly recommend you to get the Carrion Filigree Crest from EG. The dude that upgraded our sword earlier in the video. The Carrion Filigree Crest will make the FP cost of using either the Flame or Night Stance of our Sword of Night and Flame significantly less, making life a lot easier for you early game and just gives you this opportunity to spam the Ash of War comfortably 
and yeah, do whatever you want. For this, you have to go to the Mistwood area till you hear some particular individual hall. Then go to the Church of Ella and talk to the Merchant Kale. He will give you an emote. With this thing, our build is truly complete. We now have reached level 100 in epicness, coolness, and swagger. After getting the emote, go back to the woods. Use the emote when you see the wolf all the way up there. And he will jump off, break both his legs, no f**ks giving, and send you to kill Bloodhound Knight Darewill. Bloodhound Knight Darewill is in Limgrave as well, right here. Kill him, you will pretty much just one shot him with how powerful you are. The guy is a joke. After reloading the area, talk to Blade again, go to EG, use the dialogue options and then the Carrion Filigweed Crest will appear in fact in his shop. With this second talisman in your kit, you will now be so powerful, it is insane. Now like I said, this is not all. This is my get OP early video for an int and fate build, but there is a lot more to an int and fate build. Therefore, this video will have a follow up where the death mage gets a twist and becomes a different character based on things that unlock in the later parts of the game. For now, you have the strongest possible int fate build that you can possibly make at the start of the game that also has a lot of variety in it as well, which makes it so much fun and you can already just destroy the entire game with my death mage build like this. The Sword of Night and Flame is so good again after the recent patch and it's a ton of fun to use, so I'm very happy that this thing is now a beast again. However, definitely stay Stay tuned for the follow up video, you don't want to miss it. Don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe and hit the bell thing so you're the first to get notified when I upload something and let me know your thoughts in the comments.